Hey guys, it's Mike at brew-dudes.com. This is video two of our going from uh, homebrew bottling to homebrew kegging. So before we dive inside the kegerator, just want to talk to you about this, the keg itself, right? So basically all this is, you can think of this as nothing more than a bigger version, stainless steel version of one of these, right? Your, your, your trusty brown bottled uh, homebrew bottle. So this is the keg. These are called, you'll hear these called corny kegs, Cornelius kegs. The original intent of these kegs, these are five gallons in volume, a little more than five gallons in volume. This is how soda was delivered to everybody who had draft soda. Um, so you can find these new at your homebrew shop. You can find these online from uh, keg suppliers, brand new. They are fairly expensive. Stainless steel is not cheap. Um, so new kegs are expensive, but you can find them used at places like old restaurant supply warehouses. Craigslist is a great place to scour for these. Um, some of the more craft uh, soda companies sometimes have them because they're converting over to uh, pre-mix rather than keg versions and stuff like that. Um, if you know someone who works at a restaurant, they might have dozens of these in the basement that aren't getting used. So you've got to kind of scrounge around for them. Uh, you know, used versions, kegs, you can find them 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks sometimes. So it's it's not cheap. Brand new, 65 bucks. Um, the only thing a brand new keg gets you is a nice shiny surface. So you can see mine's, mine are pretty beat up. I've got mine all from uh, retired a retired soda company uh, in Boston. So, so I just want to quickly walk through the parts of what makes the corny keg work, all right? Um, so the, you can see here in the top of the keg, you've got th uh, four main parts that I'll point out. You've got two posts, and this is where uh, gas goes in and gas comes out, uh, and uh, liquid comes out. You've got the, the overall lid here, and then there's also a pressure relief valve here, which has got a, a, a ring on it. So you can pull that up to release gas, and we'll, we'll go over that another time. Um, but to open a keg, you just simply pull this off. It's got these two feet that pull the, the lid up in to seat it underneath. But you just open that, and you turn it. So it's kind of like that, a weird oval shape. And it just sits right in there. So because these are soda kegs, most of the time you'll find that these O-rings, because they're rubber, that they'll absorb soda flavors like crazy. So this is the main lid O-ring. You definitely want to buy a replacement kit when you get a, a, a used keg. So you're going to want to replace this O-ring. There's an O-ring here on the, um, on the sides of the, the posts. And then underneath here, getting into this area, here are the, these are the dip tubes okay there's this is the gas in dip tube it's a short little dip tube there's an o-ring here that needs to get replaced these things will all hold soda flavors and can affect the the flavor of your beer in the end so this is the gas in post and i'll show you really quickly on this side is a longer dip tube this is the this one goes all the way to the bottom of the keg right so that kind of looks something like that inside the keg and it's, it's got a bend in it to get to the center of the keg so you can draw more of it out. Um, something else I want to talk about. So my kegs, these are called, uh, these are these posts are for ball locks, okay? Kegs, these kegs come in two different varieties. You've got ball locks, you've got pin locks. I have never actually seen a pin lock keg. I've seen pin lock connectors, but I think pin locks are becoming more and more rare. Um, I think pin locks were originally made by the Pepsi company. Um, don't quote me on that, but uh, most of the time you're going to find ball locks. If you find pin locks online, I wouldn't shy away from them if, they're, if you can get a great deal on them because like I said, kegs are getting harder and harder to find. Um, but ball locks are definitely the most popular. Uh, so let me show you what a ball lock connector looks like. So this is, this is a gas uh, in connector. It's gray. Most of your beverage out connectors are always black. Um, they generally always look like this. This one has a barbed fitting for your gas line. Some of them you can actually have a screw-on fitting with a barb. Just makes a little more flexibility to get it on and off. Um, the key thing that makes it a ball lock, because I don't know if you can see that, but inside here there are some balls in there. And when I lift up this outer shank, there's a, it's spring-loaded. When I lift up that shank, it releases the lock on the balls so I can push it onto the post like this. And then to get it off the post, I, you lift it and pull it off. So um, it's very easy to get them on and off. Um, and let me show you for, um, so this is, 
this is what the top of a post looks like. You can see this depression here. That inside here, this is called the poppet. And underneath, there's um, a little, some feet in there that are attached to a spring. Let me see if I can just pop this out. So that is what your poppet looks like. And so th what this does is it pushes up against the bottom of the, um, inside that hole of the post. And that's what keeps liquid from just coming out or the gas escaping. So sometimes these poppets need to get replaced too because this, this is a hard plastic ring and sometimes it doesn't seat right. Um, but there's really nothing holding it on there. It just sits in there and just kind of tap it down and um, it'll reseat once I put it back on the keg. Let me just, let me open up this connector so you can see what's inside. So th these simply come out. This is just the cap. Then inside here again is another spring. And then there's another So that what sits underneath the spring is this little device, which has got a little tab on it. That tab, when you put the ball lock connector on, pushes down on the poppet and creates a gap like that inside there, all sealed up with the, with the outer O-ring, so nothing leaks out gas or liquid. And that's what ha holds it open, so that when you pull off the connector, the poppet closes and this remains sealed, and the whole keg remains sealed. So those are the ins and outs of, of the homebrew keg itself. In the next video, we're, we'll start talking about um, getting the keg in the keg grater. We'll start talking about hooking up to CO2. Uh, we'll start talking about CO2 regulators uh, and how we dial in pressure to put on the keg, how we force carbonate beer inside the keg. So uh, stay with us for the kegging series. Brew on.